Shall we begin? Let's begin. What is going on, guys? We are talking spoiler review of Invincible Episode 4. And another solid, great, good episode. So I'm going to just bounce around on what are the things I liked, the things I kind of disliked, uh, what my thoughts are so far with the four episodes. Uh, so far, I'm loving it, man. I'm loving this series. I think uh, Kirkman, I haven't really read the comics, but the, the, the show is just, I was so looking forward to the show and the show has been delivering. I think a lot of people who have read the comics are really loving it as well. This episode in particular, you do notice a little bit of the budget where the animation is a little bit still, right? Uh, there was one particular in like the beginning of the uh, episode when the guy is going to resurrect uh, this kind of like ancient demon or, or in a, it's like he's like in Egypt and stuff. And you just see him kind of just stand and the mouth moving and it just looks really, really odd. So some of the animation in here could have been better, but I kind of understand maybe they didn't have that much of a budget. They did work. They they tried to do the best they could what they had, and I think they still did a solid job throughout the episode. It's just most of the episode, it's not like 100% fantastic animation. There is some here and there, and it's been like that in a the last couple of episodes where you see a, a couple scenes where there should be a little bit more movement. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily want to look like more of a cutout, and it kind of looks like a cutout, so... Um, that's kind of my gripe on a little bit, like just a little nitpick on that. Uh, but it doesn't take away from the episode itself. I'm really enjoying a lot of the relationships, uh, the relationship between Mark, uh, Eve, uh, Mark, especially with, uh, uh, his father, his mother. Like I love the relationship and especially with, um, his new girlfriend, Amber. I really like that relationship. It's, it's pretty cute. I like the dialogue. I think the, uh, the wittiness of this episode and the humor what really worked in this episode. So I'm really embracing the, uh, I know a lot of people like the Eve and Mark and I like that Eve and Mark uh, relationship too. I like, uh, I want to see them together, but it's kind of a shame because I really like Amber uh, played uh, voiced by Zazie Beetz. And I just, I think, I just think uh, Amber is just like a bold character uh, and just really doesn't get, but Eve is the same way. They're very similar. It's just they both have their flair. So, uh, and uh, Mark is such a gullible, lovable kind of guy. Uh, and just to see him go on a date with Amber, uh, do little things to make her happy, and having to, you know, live the double life. Uh, you remember, Mark is still a teenager, and seeing this episode where, you know, he's going on his, his first mission to make sure these astronauts, when they get to Mars, they're safe. And the buffoonery and the the botch like he literally falls asleep and doesn't know where the hell they went like he he's such a rookie at this thing so but marcus we're with mark right we're with the progression we're with him learning and eventually he's gonna learn about his father and that's gonna be devastating we want him to to succeed more you know we want him to learn we see him grow we see the training still happening with happening with him and his father and he still doesn't got the flight uh, him flying down to a T yet, uh, he still has things to learn, which is great. We want a character. He reminds me of Luke Skywalker, okay, uh, where he's just his teenager. You can even say Luke was pouty and all that stuff, but then he grew. He, as a character, uh, he matured, and that's what I'm seeing in Mark, and I, I'm enjoying it right now. I really love Cecil. Cecil is awesome. Walter Goggins is doing a great job, and just him leaving the blood splat. splat uh, I don't think he had potentially did that but he's like he's so cool he's like oh yeah i left that there to remind you little shits if you guys are you know become think that you're over your head look at that look at that that's what the old guardians this is what it stands for you need to, you need to step it up so and then cecil uh cecil knows man that he already knows that um omni man or uh nolan is the one that murdered the guardians they're they're smart they're not stupid and nolan shouldn't uh, know that he knows that they he that that he did it you know uh i absolutely love the demon detective um it's a shame at the end of this episode he gets sent back to hell but that detective demon is so cool you it's a definitely a cross between hellboy and constantine and i freaking i was just it's just a shame that he i hope to see him later on down the line in the series it seems like they're hinting at that at the end of this episode so 
Um, but man, I love everything about that that character. He's in his trench coat, and he has a little bit of Marv, right? Sin City Marv uh, kind of qualities to him. So uh, he he knows what's up. He knows that you know he uh, the confrontation between him and Omni Man was great, and how Omni Man's like, who are they who's who are they gonna believe? They gonna believe me over you? It's just how it's gonna be done. You, I don't have to kill you. Uh, it's just so tense and great, and you're like rooting for the demon detective because you know that this he's a pretty de- badass character too. He's not afraid. He's like whatever, man. Um, just love that character. So the the whole mission, right, of going to Mars, and then we, we the Martian that was in the uh, Guardians, the old Guardians that all died. His people are on the Mars planet. They introduce like another species that's pretty much face huggers, so they could attach. And I believe they could like it looks like they could kind of uh, clone. It's kind of like the thing a little bit, where they could take over a host. Uh, and if that's the case, the the world is in trouble. Uh, you have the Martian King just like kind of tell Mark after Mark botches the whole mission and the astronauts get captured. I love that scene, by the way, where they're like, "Oh, uh, yeah, we don't know who this guy is because Mark is supposed to be, uh, you know, down low, not supposed to in- in- interfere with this mission at all. That he's just to make sure that these Martian or these astronauts are." Are good and they're safe but then he has to interfere because he, get, he falls asleep and they get captured and just the th- just them saying like you really suck at your job you know his first mission and he just he, he, steven yen is doing a great job nailing a lot of these lines and it's the humor is really good I, re- I really like the humor now the face hugger uh creatures i wish there was a little bit more it seems like there's a lot of kind of like pop culture references uh, a lot, a lot in the series, which could sometimes like, you know, I would like a little bit more uh, imagination with the series, especially with these new species that are, got introduced because they are literally face huggers. But I'm intrigued to see now that uh, when Mark eventually saves the astronauts and I love that scene where he's like, all right, man, and they're just like booking it back to the ship. Right. Um, I'm interested to see what happens now, what happens, like how beast are these these uh species right because we saw them take over one of the hosts and looks like they're taking out a lot of the martians in uh mars so interesting uh very very interesting what how big of a threat but we have other stories we have a lot of uh just deception right what's the deal with robot and uh getting the blood from rex and giving it to this uh whatever that thing was in the tank that was crazy. Like, what is that? What's going on? I really like Robot, too, like Zachary Quinto. And it seems like he has a thing for Beast Girl uh, because he was really, like, talking, like, down to Rex. And it's kind of weird because Beast Girl looks like a 14-year-old. And even Rex states that. But he's Rex is like, I'll bang anybody I want. Like, that was really odd. Very, very, very weird. Um, but Zachary Quinto as Robot, I like Robot a lot. I like the design of Robot. <laughs> you know, it feels like an old-school kind of design it kind of reminds me of metropolis uh the the actual i think it's kind of like harking back to that um so that's great and then you also have uh we used to be the mauler twins but now it's just one mauler and he's re uh, cloning himself which is great i like the hamburger meat he's like i know you're hungry buddy so uh and then of course the debbie he was solid in this episode debbie's gonna sell olga's house uh debbie is such a great character because she's definitely that lowest lane type character and i really feel for her when she knows that omni man or uh, nolan is just lying to her and she's like i know you you why are you lying to me and they go off and they're their little date they reminisce uh, that was great they bang before <laughs> before mark comes in um so i just thought uh i just thought that this episode really showcases you know what it is to be a human in a titan's world and having to deal like they even have conversation how like you know uh omni man uh is so powerful and she feels like she's falling off the cliff and she's the only one with no powers that's gonna fall because eventually what this episode does how it's getting crazy is that it's eventually gonna lead to uh mark discovering omni man right it has to and then also debbie so what's gonna happen to debbie when she finds it's gonna break her heart break her heart she's a strong woman but knowing that Nolan would literally, and Nolan's so straight faced when he's lying to her, uh, you really want uh, Nolan to just acknowledge, like, listen, or just tell her. But he can't. He knows he can't. But I, I was just shocked at how straight faced they they did the animation of the, him just covering it up. Like there was really, if he, he's starting to kind of, he's starting to crack 
right? And yeah, ever since Mark got his powers, I don't know if that's just his race thing where um, once uh, their offspring maybe gets powers, uh, he becomes a little, because uh, it's been it's hinted, it's been said, like you become different ever since Mark has gotten his power. So I'm wondering what, what the deal is with that. Uh, so there's a lot of questions, mystery, uh, which I really, really like because it leads to like more interest in every single episode. Uh, but they also are setting up a lot. They, uh, I love the, uh, incantation incantation, uh, that Cecil uses. I love the idea that Cecil does know, and he's trying to figure out how to approach this overall. It was a great solid episode. Another, uh, good use of music in here especially when Mahler was uh, doing his cloning thing uh I think the characters are really solid I didn't even think I, I would like Amber a lot but I'm starting to really like Amber a lot I'm, I'm dreading the day when um everything comes down to you know everything being revealed but before that it looks like we're getting another invasion uh which I do like I mean it's it's I guess it's kind of a little bit repetitive but I do like the the different species that are out there and the the different threat, right? There's always different threats. So uh, Mark botched his first mission, but you know it's it is what it is. He's still a teen. He's still a teenager. So really enjoying the really enjoying the series. This is really fantastic. It's such a rewatchable series too. Uh, smart writing, great dialogue, uh, great characters, even though it is really referencing a lot of pulp culture uh, stuff, it does feel like it. they're still, they're kind of like their own character, uh, their own kind of, like Omni-Man is Superman, but yet yeah, Omni-Man voice, brilliant casting by J.K. Simmons, it really feels like his own kind of character. These all, everybody feels like their own character, even though you have in the back of your mind that they're supposed to represent uh, popular char characters from DC or Marvel. But boy, it, it, Kirkman is killing it. <laughs> He's killing it. I love it. I I, I love the, these episodes. So thank you guys for listening. I will be doing another review on uh, Invincible uh, next week. Uh, but you could check out all my other stuff. I got TV show reviews, movie reviews, music, uh, even how to cook review, uh, not reviews, but how to do things. And then also I have uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier review up uh, pretty soon. So go check that out. Uh, so let me know your guys' thoughts, man. I just want to know your guys' thoughts. How you feeling about the series so far? I'm freaking loving it. And uh, it is definitely one of my uh, most favorite news shows that are out right now. I, I have to watch it. I'm glad it came out pretty early before I hit Falcon and Winter Soldier. So Thank you guys. I'm Dan America, Daniel Sun. Subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Like the video. It helps the channel a lot. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.